everybody stand and sing now, page 139. On the first, years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. There was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty had Calvary. On the third now, now I've given Jesus everything. Now I gladly hold him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing of Calvary. Sing it. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Mark was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty. salvation's plan oh the grace that brought it down to man oh the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary sing it now mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me there my burden soul found liberty Sing the chorus again, sing it. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary.
thing, that was good, wasn't it? Folks, we uh, have two great things taking place tonight. Brother Bobby's going to preach for us in a minute. And then the little precious soul that was saved a while back ago, we're going to baptize that young lady. And I uh, want to clarify, as we always do, that baptism is, is not salvation. It's just the first step of obedience for a Christian after salvation. And this young girl wants to be baptized. Isn't that wonderful? But brother Bobby, get on your motorcycle, brother. And uh, you give us what the Lord has given you to give us. And then we're going to baptize this sweet young lady. If you do that, I'd be so pleased. Thank you. Let's give Brother Bobby a hand. Well, the joy of the Lord is our strength, isn't it? Amen. This time of year, it, it, it's hard to get a smile, much less a life, out of most people. But this should be the most joyful time of the year. Every day, we should enjoy the blessing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And every heart, that comes from your heart. Happiness comes from happenings. But that very heart comes from the Spirit. So, most of y'all... Looking pretty happy. Of course, some of you look like you don't have to tell your face that you are. <laughs> it's a joy to be back here with you folks. I don't know how many years it's been, but it's been too long. Uh, I had to make a circle around where we had the tent at out there uh, before I come in the service this evening. I appreciate this dear man of God. I said, a man of God. There's another great man of God. Amen. I, I, I don't know how long, and it's good to meet you, sister. Yeah, amen. And I thank God for my blood family. I thank God for my wife, sons, and grandsons, and all my, my, my siblings. But I also thank God for my family in the Lord. So if you've never heard me before, you need to get used to me tonight because it won't be the last you see of me if you say. As a matter of fact, I'm not I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not big enough to do that. And besides, my wife calls me sweet and low. <laughs> Unless she gets frustrated at me, then she calls me sweet and low down. But I told her, it, it's hard to get anything on her. This has been a few years ago. We were, we were in the mall, and this is when I was, could walk and run and jump and everything. We were walking down through the mall, and I said, you may call me sweet and low down here, but you'll have to call me equal when we get to heaven, <laughs> and then everything will be splendor. <laughs> and that's not going to be long. Amen. What a joy. It is to know the Lord in these last days, isn't it? And I, I, I'm thankful for the ministry God's given me. I don't know uh, how long ago it's been since we uh, met this dear man of God. It's been a long, long time. And, yeah, and a lot of our, our dear preacher friends already left us. They leave it out. And anyway... I'm thankful our, crest, our, our paths crossed again on this side. And be praying for our ministry for 16 years. I did tent crusades across our great nation. And in 93, I got out of that. And then 95, God constrained my heart to the ministry to the little people. The Little People Association is uh, it's not a Christian organization. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I guess... Probably 60 years ago, Billy Barton, movie star, he uh, 
He's the one that orchestrated that. And anyway, I've, I've been going 21 years now. I'm ministering to those little people, and I'm the only one that's trying to do anything to help them. And I'm thankful for the ones God's saving in, in that ministry. And I appreciate you praying that God would bless us and, and minister to those little people. I believe this. I believe God had those little people in mind all along when he created Bobby Brenda. I know him. I know him. And they, they bitter, a lot of them bitter, a lot of them bitter. I don't think God gave them a fair shake in life. Of course, there's a lot of average-sized people don't think that. And some of you having a hard time this time of year. That old cloud, that old cloud of oppression, depression, is hanging over some of you. You know, you know what you need to do when you get up in the morning. Let me, let me say this: Are y'all in a hurry? If you are, take off. Won't be the first time somebody took off. <laughs> when my two sons were just little boys. I heard the office commotion in a, in my bathroom. I went in there to see what was going on. My wife had my two uh, sons standing up on the vanity, and they was making faces at one another. They were having a ball. You know what some of you need to do when you get up in the morning, when you go in the bathroom? <laughs> and have, have a big laugh. Start the day off, amen. That, that relieves a lot of stress. Makes your uh, blood circulate, and I could go on. I could. I thought about preaching on a, a merry heart tonight, but I must mind God, because y'all y'all are pretty happy, a little above average what most churches is. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious, Pastor. They, that, that blessed me. Oh, uh, here y'all have a have a little cut up time. Amen. It shouldn't be. You know, I think about this. Uh, uh, it's too late now, I don't have my tent, but I thought if, if I'd have thought of this back when I had my tent made, would have had a, a big neon sign to go out uh, uh, across the tent, said from 7 to 9 o'clock, happy hour. But it probably got some drunks in there. <laughs> Most bad church, you could put a sign up from 7 to 9 o'clock. Sad hour. <laughs> All right. Some of you ladies would like to have a face lip if you could afford it. Why don't you get a free one and smile? <laughs> Amen. I'm dying to preach that. May, can I preach two messages? No. <laughs> no. I know better than that. But I, I would appreciate your prayers. I want to wish all of you a Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and uh, all them good days. Amen. So thanks, thanks for having us tonight, Pastor. I'm, I preached for this dear man of God when he was in South Carolina. And I thank God for the being a God. God's a ladder, paths crossing all these years. Thank God for all of you. God's let me meet on this side. If there's ever, ever time God's people need to go get God. Many, many characters in the Word of God went and got God. He's still alive. And I'm thankful that I have access to go get God through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A lot of God's children went and got God in the behalf 
of this last tribulation. Amen. We don't need to stop now, children. We need to continue to go with God. America needs God's children to go with God. Somebody needs to continue. And you're familiar with Solomon. In 2 Corinthians 7, 14, I preached this many different ways, but Israel reminds me of America today, how wicked they were. And, of course, Solomon went and got God, and the Lord said back to Solomon, I've heard you. Woo! What a blessing it is to know when he hears us. And when he and we know that he hears us, then we know that we have that petition that we deserve him. Amen. Thank God he said when, 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 he, when we put them petitions up, when he, when he hears us, he said it fulfilled them. Some have said it fulfilled them. So we, I believe, um, uh, God's people was going to get God frequently about this last uh, election, I wonder how many quit. Some of you have quit. Now, y'all was a smiling. I say, how many, how many of you have you quit? We need to continue to go get God. Serious. Serious. And you know what, what, he, what he said to Solomon. If my people, who is that? The Muslims? Hmm? Is that Buddha? Is that the Catholics? No, it's that blood bought crap. If my people, let's call by my name, shall humble themselves. You're not going to do much praying if you don't humble yourself. Only, only times a lot of God's children pray is when some disaster hits. We don't need to wait till some disaster hits. This is something that we need to armor ourselves daily. And go get God. Humble. What's it going to take to humble America? Every time Israel would get built up in pride, he would humble. Mm -hmm. Only time some of you will pray is when he humbles you. But we, we need to learn to humble ourselves before some tragedy hits, before some adversity hits. Humble yourselves and pray. Seek my face. Who are you seeking? Seek his face. Y'all quit breathing. How <laughs> many says in prayer? Seek my face. This is what gets most of God. Turn from you wicked ways. That's why, that's why some of you not going to get God because of your iniquity. If I regard iniquity in the heart, the Lord will not hear. This is something before we start today, like David says, 
You know, my heart, search me, oh God. See if there be any wicked ways. What a blessing it is that we have access to him daily if we don't have any interference. You know, a lot, of, a lot of preachers, a lot of people I pray, they, they'll have on their answer machine, leave your name and number and I'll call you back. A lot of them are lying. <laughs> now, you know some of them, don't you? I want, I want to call them back and say, <laughs> won't you just put on there, leave your name and number and I might call you back. But I'm thankful, praise God, you never hear a basic signal. You never hear an X machine when we, we know that we got that direct line to the throne of God through our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. What a blessing to be able to go get God. I've traveled millions of miles. I'm thinking about, I was going to Huntsville, Alabama about three years ago. And when I was fixing to get on 24 there in Chattanooga, I 75 goes north, and I 24 goes way under 75. And it goes, turns into a one lane. I had just got under 75 and there's something hit me and put me in a spin. And I was like a top. And I, I, I looked and I was going sideways towards a guardrail. And I knew if I hit that on my side, the, the, my little van, oh, no time is what. And I said, Lord, hey. That little, that little van, it didn't hit the side. It, the back of it hit and knocked me back across the interstate and I was headed to guardrail on the other side and I happen to think I got brakes. <laughs> I put my brakes on, I got stopped oh, about two or three inches right. And I thought it told on my van. I called my son, I said, son, I, I believe I told him my little handicapped van. And all it done, busted the tire and bit the the, the back both corners of the little van. Help God. You know, there's a lot of two-word prayers. Oh, Peter had been in trouble. He said, our most kind and precious Heavenly Father, please don't let me sink. Help, Lord! <laughs> Help, Lord! Are y'all getting this? That's why we never know we never know when we may need to go get him. And I could write a book, on, and I'm not saying this to be breaking up. Well, I tell you, it's dangerous out here now. It's always been dangerous. And we need that. You never know before we get, before I get back to North Georgia tonight, I'm, I'll be calling on him. Huh? I'll be calling on them. I already have today. Hey, you saying like you're bragging. Well, I'm just bragging on knowing that I have access to my heavenly father. It's, it's not me. It's him. It's him. Thank God that we have as children of God. We have what a privilege it is to be able to go get him at any moment of the day or hour. Woo, I'm about to have a midget spell. <laughs> I'd already been running about 20 years ago. I may take a scooter spell. You know what the problem of God's people? It's not, it's not that you don't think God can. It's 
that you don't think you can. Y'all get that? Oh, you know that God can, but when you pray, Lord, I don't know if you can or not, but I wish you would if you could. God help you to grab a hold of the horns of the hour. And when you pray, not only pray and knowing that he can, but pray that he will. And we need to continue to pray for President-elect Trump. Now, don't throw no baby bottle at me or A lot of people went and got God. Come on, help me out. What happened to you? Oh, man. <laughs> yes. I could stay right there. A lot of characters, a whole lot of characters in the Word of God went. God. You're familiar with them little old three Hebrew children? You know, Nebuchadnezzar, that wicked king, he made a statue of himself. What was it? About ten stories high. And he, he put the a decree and sent it out around his providence that when they tooted those six instruments that the whole providence was to bow and the ones that didn't bow would be tossed in the fiery furnace. And when they handed that decree out to those three Hebrew children, I can see them as they looked at one another and said, and when they, when they began to toot those six instruments, they said, we're not going to bow, oh, king, to your pagan music. We're not going to bow, oh, king, to your contemporary music. We're not going to bow, oh, king, to your praise and worship music, oh, king. We're not going to bow to your gospel rock, oh king. We're not bowing. We're not bowing. It breaks my heart. Brother Payne, I helped plant a lot of churches with that tent work. Go back into some of those churches. I can't worship. I can't worship to that. God's not in it. But some people have a fit. That just shows how carnal you are. If you can have a fit. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, it takes all the grace I can muster when, to keep the right spirit when that stuff's going on. Huh? I know, I know how a Baptist church, some of you would like to, like to have, have that kind of music. And you say, well, those mega churches is having it. Mr. Choir Director, if I hear that you bring that mess in here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get one of these big old boys to hold me up and kick your rear end so hard you won't be able to sit down for six months. <laughs> well, say amen. amen. <laughs> but I know again, some of you say, well, that's how we could feel the church, but God leaves. I'd rather have I'd rather have a, just a, a little, little handful with a presence of God like I feel here tonight is to have, a, have, have, have the house full 
and hanging out the windows and God nowhere around. And you know the story. He had his elite men to bind those three Hebrew boys and said, turn it up more, seven times more. Hey, he's been turning it up on the church. He's been turning the heat up. Some of y'all not liking me tonight. <laughs> and when they threw, they threw those Hebrew children in, in that fiery furnace, you know, it consumed those elite men. And, you know, them Hebrew children didn't, didn't say, where's my cell phone? Somebody call the fire department. We're on fire. No. They'd already went and got God before they got tossed in the fire. That's what I'm saying, children. We need to learn to go get God before we get in the fire. No king, he couldn't rest. When he went, checked on them, little three Hebrew children. When he looked, when he looked over right in that furnace, he said, How many jumped the wind there? Just three, oh Lord. Yeah? I see. Four. Loose. Walking around, unharmed. And one of them's in the form of God. He went in the fiery furnace with them. Most time he sends an angel. Huh? But think about it. <laughs> I'm enjoying this where you all are now. That's God. That's our God. He's still the same God today. That's why. That's why, children, we need to learn the blessing that go get God daily. Y'all want some more? You know the setting about Daniel when Darius made a decree that if anyone prayed within 30 days to any God, they'd be tossed in the light. They, they trying to, they trying to stop God's children from praying. I say they trying to stop. I was over on the coast of North Carolina two or three years ago. A military, there's a lot of military people in that church. One of them come in one night and they said, "Today, no one on the base is to mention the name of." Jesus. I believe that's going to change. Have you seen on the windows this, this holiday, happy holidays? Has anybody seen that on the, uh, the windows? I haven't. I try my best when I go somewhere. I go around and say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I did it. I've done it for years. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And you wouldn't believe how some of them come back and say, no, it's happy holidays. Well, it's Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> <laughs> but some of them make some mad. I don't know where that comes from, but some of you probably make them mad. Somebody say, Merry Christmas to you. You know why you don't like Christmas? You're in that old cloud of depression. <laughs> Ouch. That come back, didn't it? But I'm I'm thankful. And when when I when I go into a rest at night and when they bring my food, I don't look around like this, see, and bow my head and then look back around. I bow my head 
and I take my time, and I raise my voice a little bit. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. That was what was wrong with Israel. They were unthankful. America is unthankful. Some of you never ask the blessing over anything. When God, when you go and get God about anything and God answers your prayers, you should come back being grateful and thankful. How many of you went back to God and thanked him for the election that he it was a miracle. God put Trump in there where you think he did or not. Why does that keep popping up? I'll be thanking him up the road for it. I wake up at night thanking him for it. We need to continue to go get God. He needs God now. <laughs> I heard that James Dobson led the Lord back in the summer. Had y'all heard that? <coughs> I don't have that. He said, well, he's not acting right. Well, when you was a baby in Christ, you probably cursed more than he has. He's growing. Come on. <laughs> Boy, I'm feeling backlashes. I don't want you to Well, hallelujah. Where was it? Anyway, <clears throat> when they handed that, when they handed that decree to old Daniel, he went straight to his house. His window being open to Jerusalem. That's a sign he'd been there before. And he bowed. He bowed. He bowed. Lord Jesus, you know that I have put petition up to you in and morning. And but they say if I put a petition up to you today, they're going to toss me into the ten lines. No. I can see oh, I can see him looking out that window before, but now I can see him hanging halfway out that window saying, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'll come to you today like I've always had evening morning and bringing my petitions to you. And you know the story. Threw him into the den of lies. He didn't say, somebody call animal control and give these lines a tranquilizer before they gobble me up. God, God gave him a lot, job. And old Daniel slept better than he'd slept in a while. Made him a paddock on them lines. Amen. See, he'd been going to get God three times a day. Get this. We need to go get God before we get in the fiery furnace. We need to go get God before we get in the den of lines. You know, <laughs> you gave me my job. I've been praying, Brother Payne, a lot of my, a lot of my preacher friends, a lot of my family, got to give them a lot of job. <laughs> Seriously, and God has. I never have understood why anybody would be jealous of a little ugly, bull-legged midget like me. But you know why they are? God's blessed us in the ministry all these years. 
and they call me a gimmick. Well, call me what you want. It's been an asset. My size has been an asset to reach souls. I preached over at Trinity this morning. When I got in yesterday, a little maid, when I was fixing to get the door open, she said, can I help you? And normally, I would have said, no, I, I'm okay. But this time, I said, yeah, if you want to. She come and opened the door, and I said, well, if you would, lay my towels down so I can reach them. And I started witnessing to her. Yeah! And led her to the Lord. And, and I like to see the expression change. She teared up. She was probably 25 years old. If you want to great souls, you can. But if you don't go get God about it, you won't. We ain't got much longer. You want to fill these pews? Go out in the highways and hedges, compel them to come into my house, maybe. What? What? You mentioned so winning now, and people choke. Oh, you're one of them easy believers. You can call it what you want. You might could call it hard, hey, hardism. When you pray and you fast and you work, it's nothing easy about it. We need to get back to what works. Prayer works, right? You believe that? So many works. You believe that? That three. Some of you are going to be barren when you face it. You never give out a gospel track. You never let a soul to cry. Oh, oh y'all ready? Quiet now. Hello, Georgia boy. Yes. There are many other characters in the Word of God I could go to. How you young people stand from 20 down, or 25 stand. How you young people. Is this on one three down? Yeah. All right. That's right. Stand up back there, young man. I saw you pop up and sit back down. <laughs> All right. Listen to me right quick. Move close. Back in the 1800s, Kevin Roberts went and got God in the behalf of Wales. Fourteen years later, God sent revival to Wales. Listen, we don't have 14 years left. I'm often said this. I believe have revival that's going to come through our young people. And young people, you need to learn to go get God now. One of these days, you're not going to have your mom and dad and your grandma and grandpa to go get God for. You need to learn to go get God now. I have two sons. My, my oldest son come to me about two years ago and said, Daddy, he was fixing to step out into a big endeavor and asked me to pray specifically about what he's fixing to do. Mom, Dad, how many times has your children and grandchildren come to you and said, I want you to go get God about something? You know why my son come? He knew it. His dad would go get God. I'm not saying this about him. Prayer works. It still works today. And young people, learn to go get God while you're young. Amen. Dad, Mom, I 
Have they ever heard you praying? Have they ever seen you reading the Word of God? Whoa, whoa, whoa. God help us. God help you. Amen? Would you stand, please? While we come with the invitation, I believe I felt God's virtue go out tonight. This altar needs to be full. Some of you need to be confessing up. You know. You know these things. It's not. Right? You know it's hindered you. You know what happens, Pastor? A lot of, I've had people come say, Brother Brindle, I want you to pray about something. And I know that person. And I want to say, if you get right with God, you could go get God yourself. I want to, but I don't. Y'all have had that, don't you? Why not? Why not? Why not? Search your heart where you can go get God. Nothing wrong with having people to pray for you, but you need to be the main one. Most of the time, you request prayer, nobody ever prays. you. While we sing, won't you come? God wants to help you. Yes, search me, oh God. Me, oh God. Right now. And know my heart oh, yeah. today.